Let's take a look at this flexible budgeting problem that has more than one cost driver. Milano Pizza is a small neighborhood pizzeria that has a small area for in-store dining as well as offering takeout and free home delivery services. The pizzeria's owner has determined that the shop has two major cost drivers. The number of pizzas sold and the number of deliveries made. Data concerning the pizzeria's cost appear in this schedule here. Okay, so we see that for fixed ingredients, we've got um, a cost per pizza of 380. We've also got a cost per pizza of utilities of five cents, but there is a fixed component, 630. The kitchen staff seems to be fixed. So does delivery vehicle at least a portion of it, right? There's another dollar fifty cost per delivery, as well as a 350 complete variable cost for delivery personnel. Equipment depreciation is fixed, 275. Rent is also fixed at 1830. And there is a miscellaneous cost that they've broken into the mixed components, 820 being fixed, 15 cents as a cost per pizza. Okay, in November, the pizzeria budgeted for 1,200 pizzas at an average selling price of 1350, 1350 per pizza for 180 deliveries. Okay, and the actual results came in is what you see here. So we've got all this piece of information. All right, let me slide and show you the requirements on this problem now. Okay, down at the bottom you see where to prepare a flexible budget performance report that shows both activity variances and revenue and spending variances for the pizzeria for no November. And then the uh, extra information in red text says leave no cells blank, uh, be, enter be certain to enter a zero whenever required, Indicate the effect of each variance by selecting F for favorable or U for unfavorable and none if there's no, a zero variance. Input all amounts as positive values and don't use the dollar sign. Okay, well the easiest way to solve this one is not to go directly to the flexible budget performance report but instead to go to this report right here. Which is, um, uh, well it's a it's a, it's, the, it's a flexible budget performance report, but it shows the planning budget, the activity variances, the flexible budget, the spending variance, and the actual results. So what we're doing is we're going from, uh, if you will, the standard that was planned and then the actual results, and we're determining which was the result of an activity variance and which was the result of pure spending variance. Okay, so pizzas, we had planned for 1,200. Um, there actually was 1,240. Let's make sure that agrees with what we came up with. There's our 1240. There's the 1200 we were planning on, right? Uh, deliveries, we planned on 180. Uh, we had actual results of 174, so we drop in the flexible budgeting amount of 174 because we want to compare to, uh, for the correct volume, and in this case the correct volume of deliveries was 174. Then when we look at, ex oh, oh, let's look at our revenue here. We were planning on 16,200 in revenue. We had 17,420. Um, note one says uh, the revenue is 1350. Okay, now if you look down here, I jotted in that 1350, but if I hit the F2, you'll see that I'm taking the 16,200 divided by 1200. So 16,200 divided by 1200. And that's how I get that $13.50. Okay? All right, let me uh, keep going here. Now, we actually, we had revenue of 17420 So we actually had revenue of 17420 um, And so we have a total variance between 17420 and 16200 composed of an activity variance and a spending variance. All right. Well, how did we come up with the changes and variances there? We already calculated 1350 as being our revenue of of $16,200 divided by 1200 pizzas. Okay, if we slide over here though, we we come up with 16,740. Well, how did I come up with that? Oh, by the way, that should have a dollar sign in it. So, uh we'll make that uh look look the right right way. Well, what we do is we take the 1240 pizzas that we actually uh, um, uh, made and sold, and we multiply it times that $13.50 uh, projected revenue per pizza, and that gives us 16740 
So if we look at the 16,070.40 and compared it to the 16,200, the difference of $540 is a result of the activity var variance. Well, given that that's the case, then the difference between the actual results and the flexible uh, budget results is what would be a spending variance at the revenue line item. Okay, now I jotted in 1405 right here, and what did I do? I took the 17,420 divided by divided it by the 1240 pizzas. So what we come up with is we actually had greater revenue per pizza instead of spending uh, or selling them at 1350 per pizza, we actually averaged 1405. So there was spending variance at the revenue line item of $680 as a result of uh, the uh, the cost per pizza coming out to be 1405 instead of 1350. And of course, we're multiplying that difference in pizza price times the actual quantity. The activity volume we would use the 1350 projected price times the difference between the 1200 and the 1240 pizzas that uh, were sold versus what were planned. Okay, next we look at the pizza ingredients. Now, we had a $3.80 cost we were expecting, and we get that by taking 4560, $4,560, what was planned, divided by 1,200 units. So if I were to do that math, I'll take 4560 divided by 1,200 units, and I equal that $3.80 that you see there. Okay, but what we really incurred was $4,985 of cost in pizza ingredients. Well, a portion of this is due to the volume. So if we, t if, uh, if we compare the 4985 to the 4560 we certainly uh, spent more on pizzas. But how much of it was a result of flexible budgeting, in other words, an activity va variance, and how much of it was due to a spending variance? All right, well, we can calculate that by taking the 380 times the difference in the 1200 and 1240, and that would be the activity variance. So 1240 versus 1200, I'm going to just put this in like this. And I know you can do that in your head, it's 40 units. And then if I multiply that across, across, I come up with $152. So that 152 represents the unfavorable variance, because this column is more than this column, as a result of uh, the activity being um, uh, higher than what we expected. So of that 152 unfavorable, I would expect that, because we've got a variable cost we ran uh, higher, higher, higher production, right? We sold more pizzas. Okay, then when I compare the 4712 to what we actually incurred, we also know we're $273 unfavorable. And that's the result of comparing um, the 1240 pizzas times the difference between the 380 and what it uh, really cost us on a per unit basis. And we could calculate what it was on a per unit basis by taking that uh, um, 4985 and dividing it by 1240. And so it came out to be, instead of 380, it came out to be $4.02. Okay, and then we go through the same kind of logic uh, on the other variable line items as well. So rather than working through those, I'm just going to illustrate. We've got no variance, um, or I'm sorry, I want to do the uh, variable ones first. The kitchen staff is all fixed, so 5,220. Uh, there's no activity variance. It wouldn't change. We're going to incur the same cost uh, regardless of the pizzas we made. So we actually came out at 5281, so we have a $61 spending variance, which means we spent more than what we expected. And we have that same effect occurring for equipment depreciation and rent, right? Uh, well, in, in the cases of equipment depreciation and rent, there was no variance whatsoever. So um, um, there was no spending variance, no activity variance at all. But utilities, we had a portion that was fixed and a portion that was unfavorable we would again calculate the 5% cost and figure out what those variances would be versus what the spending variance would be. So, since utilities had a mixed cost, we know we're going to spend $630 plus 5 cents for uh, every pizza we make. And when we apply that mixed cost formula, 
we would come up with 690 planned but we actually occurred nine hundred and eighty four dollars so now what we would do is take that six hundred and thirty six hundred and thirty dollars times five cents multiplying it times twelve forty and whatever that comes up to be which is six ninety two the difference would be two dollars as a result of the activity variance then the difference between the six ninety two and what we really spent would be all a spending variance Okay, delivery person was a total variable cost, so 630 divided by 1200 uh, gets us 350 per unit. Um, take the 350 times 1240, um, and uh, we come up with $609, right? So we've got an activity variance of $21 that's going to be unfavorable. We would expect it to be unfavorable because volume was higher. And then what we see is um, the delivery person at 350 per pizza, there was no variance in spending. We did pay him 350 per pizza, so we've got no variance in that, uh, in that situation. Okay, now the delivery vehicle is just like the utilities. We've got a mixed cost, 540 plus $1.50 times the quantity. Uh, we take 540 to, and then add to it $1.50 times 1,200 pizzas will come up with $810. We go over the flexible column if we take 540 plus a dollar fifty times 1240 pizzas. If we do that math, we'll come up with 801 dollars. The difference between the 810 and the 801 is a nine dollar favorable variance in this case. Okay, and then we can compare the 801 dollars to the 655. And since 801 is much higher than 655, we're favorable by 146 dollars. That would represent a favorable spending variance. Okay, we've covered the equipment and rent. Miscellaneous works the same way. It's a mixed cost. 820 plus 15 cents a pizza times 1,200 would be $1,000. Take the 820 plus 15 cents times 1,240. It'll be slightly higher. A six, $6 unfavorable, which again we would expect because we've had higher activity. And then we would compare the, what we actually spend, $954, to the flexible budget amount and what we have is a $52 favorable spending variance and that explains the whole difference between $1,000 and $954 so 6 unfavorable plus 52 favorable accounts for that difference then when we sum down our totals we can come up with the total expenses and what net operating income was okay and once we've put that schedule together then we can solve this problem by actually calculating the variances and all we're doing is dropping in uh, the information that we've already provided so in this case we calculated a five hundred and forty dollar favorable variance we would show the variance um, in this schedule where we're just going to list what the variances are and over here of course we had six hundred and eighty dollars we would list that and uh, I'll just cover the pizza ingredients as well we calculated hundred and fifty two unfavorable and a two seventy three unfavorable so there's our 152 and 273. Okay, now you might want to pause the presentation at this time to see the rest of the answers and work backwards, but you'll see it. really all we're doing here is copying from the other calculation sheet uh, that we worked on to come up with these various variances. And that's what's required on this problem.